Hey there. In my previous video, I talked about how to set up your robot in order to serve up content to a Steam Deck. We talked about how to use the uh, gamepad in order to control the robot, but we didn't cover video. So in this video, I'm going to be covering video. More specifically, how to take content off the robot and display it on a remote device. Now, there's going to be a part three to this video because there's actually a little challenge in order to make it run over that same uh, channel that the gamepad was running on. But I'm going to release this video with that initial cut, and then we'll talk about the Steam Deck specifically. So on with the show. So let's talk about some video options. There are several that you can look into. Uh, some are more appropriate with ROS and some are not. For example, if all you want to do is teleoperate a remote control device, you might want to look into using FPV technology as opposed to uh, using ROS. So for that reason, I'm not going to talk about it. Another option is to have a dedicated FPV camera that operates over a web server, and this way it allow allows you to use Wi-Fi. Not something I'm interested in doing, so I'm not going to cover that. So. The, the final ones actually involve working with ROS. Now, for my use cases, the robot is going to spend 95% of its time auto-navigating, following path patterns or path plans. But in some cases, I do want to actually teleoperate the robot. Either I'm taking it from the shop out to the field to do some testing or bringing it back, or maybe I want to do some training where I actually want to drive it around and train paths or train it. Um, obstacles or, or objects to, in the field. So sometimes I do actually want to drive it, but I want that driving to participate in the ROS, ROS composition. So ideally I want to have a camera that can act as both a teleoperation camera and as a ROS topic publisher. So for this video series, we're actually going to look at that using a ROS topic to feed a remote video stream. There's a couple ways to do that. The first is actually using our existing ROS bridge. Have a web server or web client actually subscribe to a topic, getting the binary, converting it to a texture, and, and pasting it on the screen. Um, there's a so let's look at what that looks like. So we have our robot, we have our uh, remote device. Docker containers, if necessary, and we have our ROS nodes. Now, our existing teleop web ROS node is going to create the web application that is rendered in the web browser, and the web browser is going to publish through ROS web bridge through the teleop node out to the motor controller. This is what we implemented in the previous video. However, it is possible for that web application to use the web bridge to subscribe to images and turn those into uh, video. Now, it probably is really easy to implement this, but I decided not to, specifically because I believe that there's going to be high latency uh, and you may, may need to explicitly drop images and you might have some buffering problems. So for that reason, we're not gonna do this. Now, what's the other option? Well. We can use a tech, a, an existing ROS node called the WebRTC web server. And what this does is it subscribes to ROS image topics and publishes them as WebRTC endpoints. It actually does some pretty cool stuff around turn servers and stun servers, um, but I won't be covering any of that. This is a direct connection from a web browser to the robot itself low latency, wide browser support. It does actually ne video negotiation compression so that uh, it's optimal on the wire, and it can actually gracefully degrade on the client side, which is kind of cool. Okay, so for all those reasons, uh, I'm really excited about the solution. So how, do this, how does this work? Well, our current setup, robot, remote web browser, but we now introduce two new components. The CV camera is what I'm using to get images off of a hardware camera, and it publishes on a image topic, image raw. The WebRTC ROS node then subscribes to it and turns it into a WebRTC endpoint that the web browser can bind to and display the video. Okay, so let's look a little bit more onto that one. 
So what is the WebRTC ROS node? Well, it's an open source component that's part of the robot web tools. Been there to, it's to, there today, but it only supports ROS1. It was originally written by Mitchell Wills and is currently supported by Timo and Russell. And I really appreciate all of the work that they've put into this. Uh, I am building on the shoulders of greatness here. I have taken the ROS1 node and ported it to ROS2, made it work well in ROS2, uh, and uh, making it available uh, upstream as soon as I can. So let's look at setting it up on the Jetson Nano. So let's switch over to the code running on our SparkFun JetBot. Now, if you're watching my Nav2 video series, I've been building up a Jetson Nano on top of a SparkFun JetBot uh, and showing the process of going from building the container, setting up the workspace, building it, implementing various sensors. So feel free to follow that video series. I'm actually building this in that container. So what you're seeing here is a dev container on the JetBot with a workspace. And I've cloned the WebRTC ROS node into it off of the ROS2 branch. This node is really fascinating because it actually as part of the build system will build or download and build the Chromium WebRTC component, which is both a client and a server. The ROS node itself will create a server endpoint in the background that serves up both HTML and a WebSocket. That WebSocket is what we're going to be connecting to the Babylon JS application to in the future. In this video, we're just going to show the debug entry point um, website that comes off of that ROS node. So this, uh, in the WebRTC ROS node, there's the WebRTC component, and this is a uh, callcon build that fetches the, all of the components necessary to build the Chromium WebRTC component. We have some messages for dealing with the stun and turn servers. And then we have the RTC ROS node itself uh, and a launch file. Okay, so first I'm gonna launch the CV camera, and then I'm gonna launch the WebRTC ROS node then we'll switch over to a web browser and show what that looks like. So first thing, control shift P will bring up our command palette, and then I'm going to create a ROS terminal. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with what this does, uh, it will detect if you're in a ROS workspace and source the environment. As you rebuild, it'll detect changes and resource it so that you don't have to worry about it. So in here, we're going to launch our CV ROS node. Uh, I happen to have a launch file in the teleop web that sets up the CV camera and connects it to the right camera. So we're just going to go ahead and launch that. Okay. Now that they, yes, there's some warnings in here, but it doesn't actually impact the output. I'm going to switch over to launch the WebRTC ROS node. Control shift P, create a new terminal and There we go, we have an application running on port 8080. So let's switch over to web browser and see what happens. So there we go. It does take a, a second to start up uh, as it's round tripping through the environment, but you can see that we are displaying the output of a camera on the web browser. And it actually does work on a Steam Deck as well. Now let's check this out. We're actually going to put the Steam Deck in the video and see what it looks like, um, what the latency looks like. So it's actually not too bad, surprisingly. So I wanted to thank you for watching this video. We're going to do more on this, but I wanted to get this out showing that, yes, there is an, a solution for WebRTC that displays on a web page. 
the ROS node is going to go into pull request after I publish this video, and I'm going to work on the Babylon JS version, which allows it to work on the Steam Deck with the controller, and we'll do some remote operations. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good year.